Hi, I'm Jenny Graves. I work on sex and funny animals. And by funny animals, I mean marsupials and weird birds and egg-laying monotremes. Um, the reason I work on weird animals is that comparing them with humans gives us a very good idea of how sex and sex genes and sex chromosomes evolved. Uh, we're all used to having um, sex chromosomes in humans. Females have two X's, males have an X and a Y. But it's quite different in birds. They've com got completely different sex genes and sex chromosomes. Um, and it's different again in snakes. And if you go to lizards and fish, you have all kinds of different sex chromosomes. So it's obvious that sex chromosomes have changed in evolution. So the way they change is a, a new sex chromosome is defined when a new sex gene evolves and the chromosome it's on then becomes a sex chromosome. Now what happens when you get this kind of turnover is extremely drastic because the animals, the males of the old system can't mate anymore with the females in the new system because the hybrids uh, are not fertile. So this interposes a very drastic reproductive barrier between the populations with the old system and the new system. So what this means is it could potentially push these populations apart and they could uh, evolve separately into two different species. So the, the current idea is the populations would already be separated by some kind of physical or behavioural barrier and that independently they'd accumulate mutations which would push them apart so they could no longer mate with each other and they'd become separate species. But I'm thinking, well, why can't you do both? So the big question that I've addressed is could sex chromosome evolution have shaped mammal evolution? So there are three different uh, groups of mammals. There's the placental mammals that we all know and love, like mice and humans. There's marsupial mammals, the ones with the pouches that Australia is famous for. And there's the egg-laying monotreme mammals. And in fact, they have really rather different sex chromosomes. Uh, we found many years ago that uh, monotremes like the platypus have sex chromosomes that are nothing like humans and much more like bird sex chromosomes. So that gives us a start date for the evolution of our own sex chromosomes. So this suggests that the turnover from the old system, which a platypus still has, the new system that all other mammals have 190 million years ago, might have pushed these groups of mammals apart. And then monetary mammals have gone quite bizarre. They have sex chromosomes that have actually exchanged with autosomes again and again. And that would have further emphasised their differences. And then when you get later in evolution, there's a point at which marsupial mammals have diverged from placental mammals. And again, we find a big difference in their sex chromosomes. There's a chunk of chromosomes that has been added onto the original in placental mammals. And again, this could have driven them apart. So what everybody always asks me is, well, uh, why do sex chromosomes turn over? And it seems like once a sex chromosome has been defined, it's all downhill for there. The sex chromosomes degrade, and in fact, the, uh, the mammal sex chromosome is degrading still quite fast. Um, it started off about 190 million years ago, and it's only got 47 genes left, so it's probably not very long for this world. And my thought is that if the sex chromosomes are always degrading, then the new sex chromosome system will have a selective advantage and might take over from it, and this might very well push species apart. So I'm often asked if this process is still happening and could it happen in humans? Well, it certainly is happening in some rodent groups where the Y chromosome has been completely lost and you now have several different species with new sex determining mechanisms. So potentially it's possible it could happen in primates, although it seems like our Y chromosome is more stable if it degrades at the rate it has been degrading over the last 190 million years. If you come back in four or five million years, you might find either no humans or several human species.